has now become a top 10 protocol on the Solana network by total value reaching $600 million. Co-founder Rachel Chu has been a core contributor at a multi-billion dollar sushi swap and a regular commentator for top blockchain outlets and speaker at major conferences. So welcome, Rachel. It's great to have you here at the Stock Exchange. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Solair and, and just crypto in general. Well, why does it exist? What purpose does it solve? Sure. So I guess maybe um, just the origin of crypto in general. Um, it really started off from the cypherpunk community. So, you know, cypher means cryptography and encryption methods. And punk is really this small community that started in the late 1990s that eventually grew to strive for individual sovereignty mm. in this age of, you know, digital era. So. In this digital era, almost like our social, our health, our finance is all online, it's all digital. Um, and the movement really is how can we deliver and enable individual sovereignty uh, and freedom through codes where you, me, and everybody, a billion people in this world can ultimately own, have ownership over their social finance and you know health and everything on the internet. So um, that's kind of the ethos of crypto in general. And so, you know, in, in essence, it is basically a decentralized internet. And um, so today we have obviously, um, if not trillions of data on, uh, on the internet and how can we move that into a decentralized world. So uh, one of the most important thing is how can we build decentralized network that's fast. So Ethereum and Solana are obviously known for networks that you can run smart contracts on. Mm -hmm. uh, smart contracts meaning applications like finance, like social, but um, still not quite fast enough to uh, enable you know, institutions like New York Stock Exchange uh, where you need almost like microsecond trading okay. and almost zero latency. So Solar essentially is building a high performance network that is hardware accelerated. And the technology that we're using is essentially RDMA, Remote Direct Access Memory, over Infinity Band, uh, which is actually used in AI for um, accelerating <laughs> large language model training. So, um, you know, essentially it enables from system A to system B without the use of CPUs, which enables almost 100x um, acceleration in the network speed. So, um, you know, basically I think for us, the ultimate goal is how can we build a decentralized internet that allows for institutions like New York Stock Exchange or, or uh, cross-continental trading experiences to almost land at zero latency. We you know, want to enable visa-like settlements that's fully on chain and, and all of that. So. Yeah, well, that's what I was gonna ask you, what was the purpose of financial transactions so people want quick? Like yeah. when you're paying, you want to pay and you want that pay to go through and you can move on with your day. Exactly. So, and you mentioned AI, so that could also be an application mm -hmm. for super fast blockchain. Yep. How would that work? Sure. So we have a billion people. Uh, we're probably going to see trillions of agents or AI agents, you know, on the internet or even on blockchain in general. And you really need a fast blockchain where you have trillions of AI agents that are transacting with each other mm. at a fast speed. You want instant fin finality to trade A to trade B. Uh, and um, so I think AI agent is also yeah. a very, quite of a user profile. Well, and those AI agents may pay each other for certain things. Yeah. And that's, again, brings us back to the speed and you want those things to go through quick. You don't, exactly kind of the purpose of it all. Now, recently, Solaire raised $12 million in venture capital. So talk about that process and what do you plan to do with that money? Sure, mm -hmm. so uh, that was, last year, uh, mid last year. And um, we, you know, have gotten uh, awesome investors under our table. And I think our goal really is to not overly raise too much, but rather uh, running an agile team. So we actually have a 15 people team, all based in San Francisco. And uh, our goal really is to deliver the world's first, um, the fastest performing chain uh, and network that's able to achieve um, almost a million TPS uh, transaction per second. Okay. So that's essentially enabling almost zero latency when we're talking about microsecond trading experiences uh, on chain. So um, I think that's basically our roadmap for this year. Uh, we've also de delivered various other flagship products. So how would like the average person be impacted by the speed of the blockchain? Mm -hmm. um, I think ultimately, 
I see everybody should be holding a wallet. Uh, you know, crypto wallet is kind of like, you know, it's not necessarily a crypto wallet, but a non-custodial wallet mm -hmm. where you have, you have access control over entirely to this wallet. So I, I do foresee everyone in this world ultimately having that experience. So when these many people are onboarded, what can they do? Mm -hmm. And that's where we want to enable some of the um, unique experiences that can really only be achievable when you have a real-time streaming blockchain that can stream real-time transactions, stream real-time payment settlements, uh, where you can finally move over like visa-like settlements on-chain. Now you have your own native token. So tell me about that and how does that fit into the whole Solaire ecosystem? Mm -hmm. Essentially a utility token where we ourselves um, have a consensus algorithm of proof of stake and proof of authority. So the token is going to be used for essentially a group of decentralized verifiers that verify batches or shreds of transactions through holding the token and therefore validating the network, validating the network is running and getting rewarded by it. Okay. So proof of stake is one. Uh, using it as gas token is another. Uh, so being able to transact using our own native token on the network itself. And lastly is governance. So being able to uh, run different decentralized governance processes, um, Using yeah. it, using is it, it called the Solaire token? It's like, called Layer. Layer. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, there's crypto has been in the news quite a bit lately. Um, there's the White House Summit and there's the Bitcoin Reserve. And I mean, from like a macro perspective, what do you think this means for the industry? And, you know, what, what should the government do to facilitate this so we can go into the future, but also go in in a safe way mm -hmm. and in a common sense way? Yeah. So, um, might be a hot take. I <laughs> think uh, the executive order that was signed yesterday, which uh, is basically, you know, using a seized BTC as the Bitcoin reserve, I think it actually makes a lot of sense. But in general, I personally am not... Uh, yet a convinced proponent for uh, a crypto reserve because ultimately a reserve needs to be productive and needs to be stable. So, you know, a few examples like petroleum reserve. In the 1970s, you had a oil disruption and then, you know, there was the introduction of it. Uh, there was also the national defense and um, uh, reserve and it had there's other types of reserves that also includes pharmaceuticals and medical supplies, or even special reserves that includes like semiconductors, which are all things that are useful and stable, like gold. Uh, and BTC has not very much uh, proven its lack of correlation with the stock market. So, um, you know, similar to gold, you can mine BTC, but after it is mined, it's almost like gold on steroid. Uh, so it's quite volatile at the moment. Um, but I will say, you know, one of the most important assets of BTC that makes it very valuable is because it's decentralized. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, similar to BTC, uh, similar to gold, it's very hard to move gold from point A to point B. So by nature, it's actually very hard to centralize Bitcoin. So there is inherent value to BTC. But if you did and you know, ultimately centralize BTC, then it might actually lose its value. Mm -hmm. So to that end, some of the other assets that were introduced, I feel, are not necessarily... Other tokens and coins. Yeah. Exactly, mm -hmm. other tokens that are introduced. So BTC probably makes the most sense in the way that it that they're doing the BTC reserve through the seized assets. Right. Uh, makes yeah. also a lot of That's sense. That's what I was going to say, because I know people are like, what, are you going to use taxpayer money to buy Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, like, even believers are like, oh, that could be kind of volatile and controversial. Yeah. But if it's seized assets, that, that's a different story. Exactly. So yeah. I thought that was very strategic. Yeah. Okay. Rachel, thank you so so much. Very interesting to hear about Solaire and, and your thoughts on crypto in general. Yeah, thanks for thanks. having me. Uh -huh.